Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video I'm going to talk about how I cleared my skin. So I'm sure that you know about my issues with my skin if you have watched any of my YouTube videos because I literally rattle on about it all the time. But if you're new and you don't know, so I came off the contraceptive pill I think like a year ago or a year and a couple of months anyway. So I am 31 and I previously tried to come off the contraceptive pill maybe around 24, 25. At that age, I had a really unhealthy lifestyle, which I'll go into in a little bit more detail later on. But when I tried to come off the pill the first time, my skin erupted and I'll, I'll put some pictures up over here. <laughs> So when I tried to come off the pill the first time, my skin erupted and I ended up going on Roaccutane. This was actually the second time that I'd gone on Roaccutane. I went on Roaccutane, I think when I was like 18 the first time. So as you can see, I'm painting a picture of not having a great history with my skin over the years. For a few years now, I had been putting off coming off the contraceptive pill. And the reason why I wanted to come off in the first place was because of fertility, basically. I'm not planning to have kids anytime soon, but I am also in my 30s, and sometimes it takes a while for the contraceptive pill to clear out of your system, so I just wanted to give myself enough time, basically, for my hormones to regulate on their own. But the reason why I was so terrified to come off the pill, as you can imagine, was because I didn't want bad skin. I didn't want acne in my 30s. Acne, I think, is something that you associate with someone much younger or a teenager. But yeah, it happens in adulthood as well, which is really annoying. I'd been on Roaccutane twice, as I mentioned, and it was a godsend, I do have to say. I'm not going to say too much about what Roaccutane is and the process of taking it because it was a while ago and it's not really my area. However, what I do know is the process of taking Roaccutane is quite intense and I think really it should be used as a last resort. This time around I wanted to be really prepared for if my skin broke out, which it did, and I wanted to try my best to get as clear skin as I possibly could holistically and I'm going to talk you through exactly how I did that now and just for some transparency I don't have any makeup on now and I thought that was really important to do during this video so that you can see what my skin is like now so I still get the odd spot I think I've actually got one under here but compared to what it was like whenever I came off the pill about six months in it is not even comparable. I also do want to say that I don't think my skin is cured, even if that's even the way you phrase it, but I've definitely figured out a way to manage it. And the way that I've looked at it really is that my skin is just different coming off the pill and it needs different things. So the first place I started was with my nutrition, which is apt since that is literally my job. I am a fitness, Pilates and nutrition coach. So basically in a nutshell, I just cleaned up my diet. I cut out alcohol. I focused on whole foods and processed foods. I tried to get as much colour onto my plate. I also focused on anti-inflammatory foods. I have a list of them which I'm gonna attach to the video over here. Um, but I try to pepper those into my diet basically as much as I can. Another thing, and this is a big one, that I did whenever it came to diet was cut out sugar, which I know is depressing. I didn't cut it out completely and I still ate natural sugars so I still ate honey and fruits things like that but any refined sugars I just cut out of my diet as best as I could. If it was the odd birthday or I really fancied some chocolate or a slice of cake I had some chocolate and a slice of cake but the interesting thing is is that I saw it on my skin the following few days. Sugar is super inflammatory and acne is a form of inflammation so that's why I decided to cut back on it. I now probably eat more sugar but again I do notice it on my skin whenever I do. I mentioned then that I cut out alcohol and that is a really big one for me and I also just want to say that different things inflame people differently. Some people can drink alcohol and eat sugar and it doesn't show up on their skin. I am sadly not one of those people. Also maybe not sadly because it does kind of force me to really look at what I'm eating and be sensible. 
Another thing that I really had to monitor was stress levels and sleep as well. To be honest, I'm not someone who really struggles with sleep. I, to be honest, right now, I could lie down and have like a 10 or 15 or 20 minute nap very easily. But I really noticed whenever I wouldn't get eight hours sleep or if I was feeling particularly tired, I would see it on my skin. Just looping back to alcohol there, I noticed too that alcohol really affects your sleep and it affects your quality of sleep and therefore that affects your skin the next day too. When it comes to stress, stress is inevitable sadly in the modern world that we live in but I really tried to limit it as much as I could. This is different for everyone obviously jobs vary, lifestyles vary, but I think it's important to set boundaries for one and also have coping mechanisms. So me, for example, if I'm feeling stressed, if I'm feeling anxious, I just need to go for a walk and that clears my head. And I know that sounds like the most basic B thing to say, but it's true, it works for me. So this time around coming off the pill, I had a much healthier lifestyle. Whenever I tried to come off the pill previously, I was going out a lot, I was smoking cigarettes, I was eating a lot of processed food, I wasn't eating very much, I wasn't getting much sleep, I just had a bit of a party lifestyle basically. And so this time around, I feel like my acne wasn't as bad, but I am gonna show you pictures anyway of what, what it was like. So my skin, this time around coming off the pill started to break out around month six, something like that. And I was prepared for it. And one thing I did to prepare was get monthly bespoke facials. And the reason why it was really important for me to get bespoke facials was because I didn't really understand my skin. It kind of felt like it had gone a bit combination-y. Is that a word? I don't know, anyway. So it was breaking out all around here. It was very oily and it was dry in patches too. And so I found a fantastic facialist called Marco who really helped me understand what my skin needed. I do have to say though, they are an investment. And when I was coming off the pill previously, I just wouldn't have been able to afford them. So I'm very privileged to be able to do that now, but they definitely helped. And I feel like I wouldn't be transparent if I didn't say that that really helped with my skin too. Speaking of investment, so Marco really taught me the products to put on my skin in order to maintain it during the periods when obviously I'm not seeing him for a facial. So I thought what I would do is just talk you through some products that I use. So Marco put me on to this Clinicare range which is for inflamed skin. So I have a one step, a two step, and a three step. He also put me onto this which is literally, I don't know what's in it, but it is a godsend. So it is the Hypo 21 Heal Your Skin Purifying Skin Spray and it's medical grade, I think that's what they say. And I just pop it anywhere where I tend to have breakouts and since I've been using that, I very rarely have spots. So every morning, every evening, I go through all of those steps and then in the mornings, I'll always use a sun cream. Everyone should be using SPF, I don't care what you say, but me in particular, I have very, very naturally fair skin. So this I put on every day and I love this one. It's La Roche-Posay, age correct. I know this isn't a video about anti-aging, I'll probably do another video on that in the future, but I think just on the subject of knowing your skin, I think it's really important whenever it does come to aging as well. So a fantastic book that I have previously read is The Wrinkle Cure by Nicholas Pericone. You probably have heard of the skincare brand Pericone. And there's a really great part in here which basically talks you through the different types of skin and how they age and what products you need for it. Sadly, I fall into the camp of people who age like milk. So I look like milk and I age like milk, which is fantastic. So this book has um, prepared me for that. You can't have everything, can you? On the subject of being a pale queen, I have worn fake tan for a long time, since I was about 16 probably. 
And having very, very fair skin is something I've always been insecure about. It's something that people have always made comments about. And I actually remember having a boyfriend who we were having, this was years and years ago, by the way, we were having a conversation and we basically asked each other like what our favorite features were on ourselves. And I, at the time, bless my heart, said that I really liked my pale skin. And I remember his reaction was like, really? <laughs> and I remember thinking like, do you not? And I think it's just like such a societal thing, isn't it? Especially being in Britain. But you know what? I am going to try and embrace my pale skin and I am trying currently to quit fake tan. I have applied it a few days ago, hopefully for the last time, but we're going to see. And it's starting to come off on my skin. But what I've noticed since taking better care of my skin and since coming off the pill is fake tan just doesn't look good on me. Like it goes all patchy. I'm spending so much money on my skincare and the quality of my skin and then I'm putting fake tan on. Like, make it make sense. So I'm gonna document that process of me attempting to come off fake tan. But I do notice that whenever I don't wear it, especially on my face, and whenever I don't wear makeup as well, my skin is so much better. So in a nutshell, that's everything that I have been doing in order to maintain my clear skin. It's been a journey, it hasn't been easy. I've had to throw a lot of money at it. I've had to throw a lot of time at it, but it has been so worth it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any more questions, pop them down below and let me know also what other videos you'd like to see from me. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next one.